Today I'm going to show you how to do an artificial swarm. Hello, I'm Cliff Reese. Welcome to Gwyneth Cliff Fair. Here we talk everything beekeeping, farming, countryside living, and we do reviews as well. Now I'm doing my seven day weekly inspection, going through all the bees. I've had a split a fair few colonies over the last two weeks. And I've just come across this hive and it's not absolutely rampart of queen cells, but there's queen cells in there. That was on the end frame and when you see them on the end frame, you know these bees want to swarm. So I'm just going to talk through my process of stopping the bees from swarming. I produce a small artificial swarm and that's pretty much the best thing to do. Because once the bees get the swarming in uh, instinct, very, very hard to get them out of there. That's their natural reproduction system when you go in against nature. So let them swarm, but you be in control of the swarm. So you want to keep this swarm as small as possible to keep this hive big. Because we want this hive to produce lots of honey. It's the prime season now for producing honey. And we want to make sure that we don't take too many bees from this box to affect how much honey is producing. And if this is your first time watching, then please hit the subscribe button. I try my best to put new videos every week, whether it's beekeeping like this or general countryside living and farming. Anyway, on with the video. Let's split this hive. Okay, first things first. Obviously, I've opened this box up and I've already found the queen. So I've got the queen in the single-handed queen catcher. You can see all the bees around her because she knows she's in there. So I'm not to panic now, she's in there, out the way. And I'm gonna to continue to go through these frames, cut out all the queen cells. So when it's time to close this hive down, I can just do so quite easy. You can do this quite quick now. Queen cell there, I'm just gonna give that a pinch. Queen cell there, queen cell there. These bees are very much wanting a swarm. Shaking the bees into the box. Queen cell there again. Right, so I've cut out all the queen cells from the hive. Now, very important, when you do an artificial swarm, you cut all the queen cells out. Some beekeepers will tell you, you can just leave one queen cell in there now, take the queen out, make the split, and that's fine. Trust me, that doesn't work, okay? What's gonna happen then, if you leave the queen cells in here now, the bees will produce a cast swarm, and they'll swarm with a virgin queen. So, this is the process. We're gonna produce an artificial swarm now. We're gonna close the hive up. In seven to eight days, well, between seven and 10 days time, I'm gonna come back here. Then I'm gonna cut every single queen cell out, apart from one. Then I'm gonna leave this hive be, probably give them four to five weeks before I check on them again. Hopefully by that time, the new virgin queen is successfully mm -hmm. mated. She's come, taken over the hive and that's the job done. Now that is the way I do it, and that is the fail-safe way to do it, and that's how I would recommend you do it. With that said, let's go ahead and split these bees. Right there. Just cool these bees down a little bit. Job done. So I got, in this case, a Payne's Poly milk. I've lost. The queen is still a bit there, but that's okay. That's just going to be a pain for me later on. We're going to take two of these frames out, put them to the side. The queen is there. I'm just going to put her there just to get, start getting the pheromones down there that these bees cool down and they want to go there. Now I'm going to find two frames. Lots of eggs on that one, so I'm going to leave that there. So I want to leave all the eggs in this hive so they're gonna keep coming through in the next couple of weeks so there's still fresh bees coming into this hive over the next four weeks i don't want this hive to run out of bees so but we are gonna find sun frames in here that's not really important you can see there now that's too too much of an important frame solid brood she's laid up in the middle this hive will need that frame but my main priority is producing honey 
this split that I'm doing today is going to produce no honey this year whatsoever. Uh, this colony of bees will be for next season. Right, he's left a bit of space in there. So there's a little bit of seal brood in there. That's going to hatch out straight away. Pop lip the milk, they're not going to know any difference that it's been split. Bit of seal brood on that side. She's laid a little bit up in there, but that's okay. I don't think we're going to find the perfect frame. But as long as there's some seal brood in here for them to hatch through, that's the main thing we want for this colony. But I don't want to give them a solid frame like that. I'd rather keep that frame in this box. But what I am looking for, I'm looking for a frame with some honey and some pollen in there. Because these bees, they're not going to be foraging as hard as this big hive, so I just want everything to be in this hive for them already. Very, very simple thing to do. Uh, this, as you can see, this hive, the queen just laid up every single frame full of brood. Everything is absolutely perfect with her, so she's just going to have to have this full frame, and I'm going to have to give them some feed straight away. Because I can't see any frames in here where they've stored any honey. All the honey is in the supers with them. Yeah, lots of fresh eggs on that one. So the reason I want a lot of fresh eggs in this hive as well, because these this hive is going to produce a new queen now, and they're going to do that out of a day-old egg. I don't want these day-old eggs to be in here because this queen can lay. So having day-old eggs in this hive isn't a problem. They need to be in this hive for them to produce a queen. And take your foundation frames. Put them on the back, never put them in the middle of the hive. That last queen cell we're going to take out. Actually, there's lots of pollen on that frame. No eggs at all, it's just a frame of pollen. I'm going to take another frame of foundation out of this box and I'm going to put that back in there. Normally I don't do that, I normally just do a two frame split because this is pretty much the only pollen frame that I can see. There's probably lots of pollen they've got up in the supers but I just want this hive to make sure that it's got enough stores and feed to produce the fresh bees. Okay so next drop. Sorry, I've missed a step. So before you close the hive up, we're gonna shake some bees into this nuke. And I'm gonna shake two frames. Now. Now what's going to happen there is all the older bees, the flying bees, they're going to fly out of this hive and they're going to end up back in here. So you've got to shake more bees in here than what you want to stay in the hive because the only bees that's going to stay in here are the nurse bees. So you've got to over shake the bees into the nuke. And depending who you talk to, some people say that shaking bees from the supers are better for this type of split. I don't really know what the answer is there, but what I do is I shake two frames of bees from the brood box and if this was fuller of bees, I'd shake two super frames in there. But all the bees in these frames, they've gone down, so I'm just going to shake one frame into this new box as well. And that's going to be a job done, I'm going to give them a bit of feed straight away. Nice bit of honey coming in within the flow now. Just gonna shake those bees down on there. That's the job done, we fit this with the big hive now. And 
and then I'm gonna release the queen back into the box. All right, so I'm gonna take the plunger back down. These bees really wanna get at the queen. Just gotta watch you don't damage the queen. When you slide this back, you cut a bit of it off. That's the queen there. coming out now. I'm going to push the plunger out. She's marked red. There she is. Out you go, girl. And there she is. Straight down the frame. Check those bees back on there. That back in the pocket. Crown board on and the roof. Now I'm going to move this somewhere else in the apiary. Now, ideally, you don't want the nuke to stay really close to this hive, but you can if you want to do. You can turn the entrance out so the entrance is pointing the other way. That's fine. I am going to need some space here now, so I've got a little bit of space down on the further side of the apiary. I'm going to take that nuke over there now. So the next job now is because this they haven't got any stores at all is I'm gonna give them some invert bee setup. I don't make sugar myself, always buy purpose-made stuff in. And just like that today now, I've got plenty in stock. I'm gonna slip that in, I'm gonna fill this feeder up all the way. trick if you haven't got the floating bit of wood in there just some grass or some reeds brush anything we're just going to put that there stop the bees drowning in the cellar find rush works really well for this job let's take these bees away push them to the front of the hive I'm gonna crush any bees. I'm just gonna put that on top of there for now. Level this off. And that's it. Job done. That's how I do an artificial swarm, and that's how I stop my bees from swarming. Well, that's it. That's how I stop my bees from swarming and that's how I produce an artificial swarm. And I would highly recommend that you, if you need to do an artificial swarm, you do it this way because you keep your main hive as strong as possible and that is still gonna give me a honey crop. They're still gonna produce honey where this is very, very small. We're not interested in getting a crop of honey from this hive. There's no enough bees in there. It's in the middle of June. They're not gonna have time to produce any honey. I'm going to feed them set up now when they're in the nuke, help them bring the new foundation frames out. So in about four or five weeks when these go into a full size hive, they'll have enough bees to fill an entire brood box and they'll overwinter very well on that. When you make these splits, you've got to help them out, you've got to protect them, you've got to feed them because if the weather turns, this hive hasn't got the resources that it needs to go out there and bring that nectar back to feed the bees and feed the queen and it's quite a simple system to do that hive now i've already said i'll check that now in seven or ten days this nuke i won't check for at least four weeks easy the feeders full they're going to be fine well if you like this video and you want to watch more of the same kind of content then please subscribe to my youtube channel i try my best to put a new video every week thanks for watching